Do you dread material testing? Is it one of those things that you just keep putting off because you're intimidated by the process or you just keep searching on Facebook groups to find the right settings for your machine? I don't think that you need to make it so complicated. So today I'm gonna to show you a really simple way to at least understand how to cut through something on your Thunder Laser and some simple engraving settings. I don't really like having to make these big cards like this because I just think they're a waste of material. Yes, it could be beautiful if you want to have really specific understanding of your engraving settings. If you want something that you could share potentially with your clients or your customers to show them all the different options on engraving. But typically, we as makers don't really need that much detail at our fingertips every day. And we don't want to waste that precious material. You also might be in a hurry, like I was yesterday when I needed to cut quarter inch acrylic and I hadn't done it before. And so you might want something just quick, easy, and not using a lot of material to see, will it cut? So today I'm gonna to show you a way to do a cut test, simple like this, and an engraving test. So you can perform this in under 10 minutes and use minimal material to get the answers that you're looking for for your next project. Now, this won't work on something like a cup, where you need to actually physically use the cup so that you might still want to do some research on or any of those specific materials that you have just one of and you can't really use a piece a scrap piece but i have lots and lots of scrap pieces of acrylic and birch and things that i have from my glowforge that now i can just cut little small places in and have a really good idea of what settings that i want to use for those going forward so if that's something that you are interested in stick around we'll get started I have created a simple test file. You've probably seen a lot of these test files that have many, many layers and really are intense. So I created something that I thought might be easier for myself, which was just a series of concentric circles. Because if the first one cuts out, then I don't need to keep going. This what I created for based on two millimeter birch. I have about six millimeter Baltic birch in right now that we're gonna test. So I'm gonna just show you how to adjust these layers. So the first, the last layer, in these circles so they're going to cut in the order of the layers here so you can change the order that your layers cut by just dragging them and moving them we're going to start with the outer circle the recommendation for four and a half millimeter plywood is about 15 speed and 90 power so we are going to go ahead and try 15 speed and 90 power on that layer and hope that that cuts out. Um, this is about six, like I said, about six millimeter birch, so it might not cut. Then I wanna take these layers and I wanna go in increments down to see how fast can I cut at that power and still get it to cut through. So I want that to be 25 speed, max power 90, and a min power of 85. Really that min power is to help with corners. Robert Kofet has a great video on this. None of the other things here really matter. Because I'm cutting, I am going to use high air. The next one I will take from 60 to 35. And then this last one I'm going to go ahead and change to 45. And the reason that I'm doing this in this order is so that I can cut this first circle. And if it cuts out clean, then I'm done. I know that that will work for this material. If it doesn't, then it cuts the next one. The great thing about the Ruida controller on the Thunder Laser is that I can just press pause and I can stop the job. So I don't have to waste a ton of material. I can actually make this a little bit smaller as well. I'm gonna take this whole section. If you wanna select everything without having to make sure you get all the way around it, you wanna go from the bottom left and it'll grab everything that it touches. And we're gonna go ahead and actually just make this 40. And then for this portion, which we'll do next, these are just different engraving options. I don't really need every single option that's available on one of those test circles. You could try a few. Since I haven't tested it on this material, I am gonna use quite a few. Now on these, I am the recommended engraving for plywood in general is the same, no matter the depth. And so the speed is 400 and the max power is 20. So you'll see that's the very first color that I did was that that 420. So then I said, okay, if I want a slightly deeper engrave, what about 400 speed, 30 power? Then what happens if we go a little bit faster, 500 speed, 30 power, 700 speed, 30 power. So really just some different options to see what these engravings look like. A couple of other things to note, I am going to use a 0 0.080 line interval, and I'm only going to take one pass and I'm going to fill all the shapes at once. This won't really matter in this case, but if you fill shapes individually and you have something that is 
moving all across your surface, you could be in for a very long engraving that you don't necessarily need to do. So this one I actually had at 20 because I wanted to try a different line interval. So I wanted to try 250 lines per inch or a 0.1 line interval just to see what that looks like. So you could set this however you, you want. You could use one word, you could use a couple words. I am gonna actually cut this out so I'm going to run this secondarily. Right now this box around is not set to output because I'm not sure which of these will cut out. So I will run this first and I will choose cut selected graphics and I will just send that to the controller and then I will cut this part out. And that's it, that's all the setup that you need. So I've already gone ahead and placed my material in the laser. Now in this case, I have quite a bit of material to work with so I could do a bigger test, but I have a lot of scrap material from my Glowforge that I wanna use. So I wanna be able to use that. So I'm gonna set my origin. I set the origin to the bottom of this graphic. So I'm gonna move this down near the bottom. And I have already set this at six millimeters. So I focused this in already. I cleaned my lens and we should be ready to go from here. Okay, so you can see with my pieces here that my last one did cut out, but also my second to last did. So even though that recommended speed for four and a half millimeters was 15, I was also able to cut it out at 25, but 35 and 45 didn't cut. So I could use those as a starting place for a score line. Now I did get quite a bit of burning. You can see some little spots. So I may want to play with those settings more to see how I can get if I put a little more air, a little less air. But if I know that I'm going to sand anyway, it's all right. But now I have a starting point without having used a ton of material. All right, here's the engraving test running. You can see that it is moving pretty quickly, but we are sped up quite a bit. This didn't take very long, maybe four minutes in total. So here's where you get to the things that are really just all about personal preference. A couple of things to notice. So I, in a couple of cases, actually used high air versus low air, and it feels like maybe that's something I want to play around with a little bit more as far as it leaving marks on the edges. But you could decide, so this was the standard recommended, the first, the T at the 400 speed 20 power versus this at the 30 power, which is significantly darker. And then back here where this is a different lines per inch than the T, which realistically, I can't tell that much of a difference in this test. So you can then decide which one you like the best and play around a little more with the air, with all of the different things that you can change, the lines per inch, the speed, the power, but this will give you a good starting point. For me, this works better than these cards because I like seeing it in the context of something I might actually do. And you can see there's so much wasted space here in terms of things I just don't need to see. I don't need to know that a 15 200 engrave is going to be that black. I'd probably never use it or some of these faded ones. So just an alternative way that you might want to go about testing your materials. All right. So you saw what an easy process that was to just get a quick answer for will it cut through and what does that engraving look like? Once you've done that, then you can start dialing in those settings when you have another scrap piece test another cut, another little circle. See if you can go slightly faster, use slightly less power. If you go faster, you get the job done quicker. If you go slower and use less power, you might extend the life of your laser tube, or you might just get slightly different results in the edges. That really comes into play when you're dealing with acrylic or some of those other materials that have, you're really, really concerned about the edges, but that could play in, in wood too, if you're thinking about how you like your edges to look from a, a char perspective. So simple, easy, quick. If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comments. Wasn't that easy? I like to make things as simple as I can, and you can then dial in the settings after you have a starting point. But really just getting started is the big thing. If you're struggling to get started, we'd love to have you in our Facebook group, Laser Maker School. It's run by myself, Jacqueline Kyle from The Fable Tree, and John Kaipoff. And we're talking about all things laser, specifically laser businesses, and how do you get those started? And what are tools and tricks and tips that we are using there? Uh, it's a great community and we'd love to have you. The information is down below. If you're looking for more simple, quick videos like this, let me know what you're curious about. I'd love to help you in any way that I can. 
and I'll see you in the next one.